Okay, so you should have that circled. What conditions are required? So what, what were the things you were actually reacting? Did I take salt crystals and mix them with other salt crystals? They are solutions. What's the better word than liquid? Aqueous. Very good. So you need to have aqueous conditions. Remember, if you want to make yourself a note again, remind yourself that that means dissolved in water. Okay? So we're going to draw a picture similarly to the one that we did yesterday, except talk about a few extra things in addition to that. So I'm going to use the reaction I have up there as an example. And we have silver and nitrate mixing with sodium and chloride. So if we dumped all of that into a beaker, you end up with this stuff floating around. Okay, do you guys agree with that? And based on the lab that we just saw, I think we can all agree that NaNO3 is not the important thing here because that was in every single thing that we had. So the NaNO3, it turns out, actually stays dissolved. Okay? So that's still going to be dissolved as ions. But the cloudiness that you see with that reaction, whoever did that one, it should have looked kind of cloudy white. Okay, so the cloudiness that you see with that reaction is actual solid AgCl that's forming. So show that in your picture by making it a little like solid brick or cube or something. Okay, so that is solid silver chloride and dissolved sodium and nitrate. There are a couple other vocabulary words I want you to write down, and one of those is spectator ions. You actually did this already when you did your vocabulary after the last test. In the, the product beaker, what are the spectator ions? Na plus and NO3 minus. Good. Does that make sense to everybody? So with these types of reactions, you can form some different products. The main one, what's the main one that we saw today? Well, that was a product, but what was the main indicator of a reaction that we saw today? Cloudiness, yeah. Okay, so what is that? That is called a precipitate. I'm going to try and squish it in here. And that is a solid, which I hope that we all kind of got out of that. So actually, the formation of water is an indicator of a double replacement reaction. So water, you might want to make yourself a note that it's an acid-base reaction, is an example of another product for double replacement. And that actually is the neutralization of an acid and a base. So in that case, you do have a liquid forming. And finally, um, one that we haven't seen yet, but that is also possible, is if you see bubbles. So once again, we've, done this, we've said this many times now, but what does it mean when you see bubbles? A gas is formed, good. And so obviously that would be a G in parentheses. So using that same reaction that we just had, you can actually write out an ionic equation and a net ionic equation. And the reason I'm showing this to you is because you may see it later, but also some of the, if you finish your quest early tomorrow, you're going to need to know this for tomorrow. So an ionic equation is literally listing out the different ion parts. So in the equation that we had, what ions did we have floating around in the reactant beaker? Uh, yep, that was one we had Ag, which is plus one, and aqueous, because it's floating around and dissolved. We also had NO3, which is also aqueous, because it was dissolved. We also had sodium and chloride. Good. This is just going to go in the margin somewhere. Okay, and that's only the reactant side, right? This is everything that was in the reactant beaker. So what was on the product side? 
<laughs> yes, but we had Na still floating around, right? And we also had NO3 still floating around. So that's why those are aqueous. Then you had AgCl as a solid. Okay? So this is the complete ionic equation. For these, it's actually important that you think about it because otherwise, how would you know what the precipitate is? So I, as long as you understand that everything else is aqueous, you're okay. But if I ask you to indicate states of matter, yes, that would be important. Okay? So we can also write a condensed version of this because obviously that's a lot of extra stuff. And this is related to what, we what April said the spectator ions were. So... Basically, if you're writing out the complete ionic equation, you can see that you have the same thing on both sides with the, with the um, nitrate and the sodium, right? So you can actually basically cancel those out because they're the same on both sides. They didn't change. So those are your spectator ions. When we reduce that or only write the stuff that we didn't cross out, then we end up with this. So you have the silver ion plus the chloride ion that were dissolved, and then you're making solid silver chloride. Is that okay with everybody? So this is called the net ionic equation because it's the part that really matters and is different. So the complete ionic equation is that one. This is the net ionic equation. Probably, you probably want to make yourself a note in your reference packet that this is for looking at the products of the reactions. Okay? So for the single replacement reactions, we were using the activity series yesterday, and that was looking at the reactants. So if you didn't make yourself a note yesterday in your reference packet, you need to probably put reactants for that. So these are products of specifically double replacement reactions. So identify the cations and anions in each compound. That's basically writing out the reactants for your ionic equation, right? So I have lead, which is a plus 2. I have nitrate, which is minus 1. I have copper, and I have sulfate. I know that copper is plus 2 because sulfate is minus 2, and there's only one of each, right? So we've done that before. Now you pair them up with the other thing, so you're just predicting your products in that case, so we're going to stick lead with, actually let me erase that. We're going to put lead with the sulfate, and we're going to put copper with the nitrate. Okay, I'm just going to show that we're putting them together. I'm going to write the correct formula next. So lead and sulfate were plus 2, minus 2, so that makes the correct formula already. And what is my correct formula going to be for copper and nitrate together? Cu2NO3? What's the charge on copper that we wrote in the first part? Okay. Yes, there you go. So CuNO3 with two of those. Good. Okay, and then balance the equation real quick. So we end up with lead nitrate plus CuSO4. I'm going to go on the bottom because I write big. So how do I balance this? It is already balanced. Good. All right. The question is, which of these things is going to be a solid versus aqueous? So remember, we're going to look at the products of our reaction. So using your solubility chart, the way that you read it is typically it's organized by the anion piece. So if you look there, you should see a rule for nitrates. Nitrates pretty much are always soluble. 
When something is soluble, that means it stays dissolved, and it's then probably a spectator ion, okay? Things that are sulfates, what is the rule related to sulfates? So because of what your rules say, lead sulfate is your precipitate because it is not soluble in water, which means it's going to fall out of solution as a solid, okay? So when you were writing states of matter there, that would be the solid, copper 2 nitrate would be aqueous still. <clears throat> All right, so if you need it, the net ionic equation up here, you would find by listing out everything that you had in the first square of your table, so you had PB2 plus, plus nitrate, but how many nitrates did I have in the equation? Two, so I actually have two in there. I had a copper and I had a sulfate. Okay, does that part make sense? That's basically just our first square. When we predicted our products, we said that we had PbSO4 as a solid. So when you make a solid, that's going to be a compound now. But if you have something that's aqueous, it's actually still ionized and dissolved. That's what our beaker picture showed us. So you have copper with a 2 plus charge and two of the nitrates again, right? And remember, we said that that was already a balanced equation, so this also has to be a balanced equation. So in this case, our copper is on both sides, our nitrates are on both sides, so your net ionic equation is going to be the lead ion, which was aqueous, plus the sulfate ion, which was aqueous, to make solid lead sulfate. Okay?